G'day, Chris here and welcome back to Clickspring. In this video, I machine my version of the impossible dovetail. This is a popular woodworking project that I learned about from watching Jack Howling on his YouTube channel. It's a connection of two pieces using a seemingly impossible dovetail join. But of course there's a trick, and a very clever one it is too. I've included a locking pin to keep the first time viewer from pulling it apart too quickly. It's easy enough to push out, but it should slow them down a bit and make it a bit more interesting. I've also included a small stand to set it off from the desk. For materials, I have these rectangular pieces of brass and aluminium that I've squared up off camera. The different materials will give a nice contrast to highlight the dovetail join. The pin will be made from some of this 3 quarter inch cold rolled steel, and I'll use a small section of this brass sheet for the base. So let's get started. One of the key things required for the project to succeed is that the parts be able to fit together well regardless of how they're oriented when they go back together. For that to occur it's critical that the initial stock be perfectly square and that all cuts are made at precisely 45 degrees. So I'm taking time to accurately dial in the vice angle using a precision ground V-block to give me the 45 degree reference. Once the stock was in place, I used a wiggler to position the spindle over one of the corners. A quick check over at the other corner confirmed the alignment of the spindle, and then I made a start on removing the bulk of the waste stock. Now the way I'm choosing to tackle this project means that it hinges on the availability of a narrow taper dovetail cutter to remove the rest of the stock. And as far as I'm aware this isn't something that's available commercially. So I've made my own from drill rod to do the job. Click on the link if you'd like to see a video about that. And you can see I'm asking quite a lot from this little cutter. There's a lot of contact with the workpiece and it's both conventional and Klein milling at the same time, which is far from ideal but I did a surprisingly good job and had no trouble cutting through the soft aluminium. In fact, it took out most of the waste stock in a single pass. One small negative was the little burr at the top which suggests it's rubbing rather than cutting at the very top of the cutter, but other than that, the rest of the cut was quite good and a quick clean up pass on each side left an excellent surface finish. A gentle rub with some 120 grit paper knocked down that burr, leaving the first part of the puzzle in good shape for now. The matching brass section was machined in much the same way, although whilst the dovetail cutter had no problem with the aluminium, it really did struggle with this brass. I had to reduce the feed rate significantly or risk overheating the cutter, which meant this part of the job took much longer than I would have liked. In fact, if I was to do the project again, I'd probably make both top and bottom from aluminium, and then maybe anodise them different colours to highlight the join. I'll specify that in the plans which you can get from the website. And because the shop made cutter was having such a hard time, the surface finish suffered a bit too. The walls of the cut were okay, but the bottom surface was a bit ordinary, and nowhere near as clean as the aluminium. Having said that, the end result was adequate for the project and the two major pieces came together quite nicely. The small burr raised on the brass piece was making the fit a little tight. So again, some 120 grit paper sorted that out and the fit was much improved. And both pieces have some rather sharp edges left over from the milling, so I took care of them next using some fine cut files. A 
OK, now that the two major components are fitting together well, I can drop in the hole for the locking pin. And next up is the pin itself, which was a reasonably straightforward piece of turning, although the diameter of the pin does need to be accurate to be a good snug fit in the hole. Once the diameter was sorted, I parted off and then used these gravers to form the dome section on the other end. The final piece to make is the stand, which I started by roughing out the basic shape on the scroll saw. And once it was close to the line, I fixed it to this superglue pallet and then milled out the fold lines, much like I did in the rectangular blowing tray video. It's a bit of extra work, but it's a very convenient way to get small shapes into position for soldering that might otherwise be difficult to hold in place as they're heated. Now the brass sheet is supplied with a hard temper, so it's already work hardened. If I tried to bend it in that state, it'd just crack and defeat the purpose of all this milling. But by heating it to a red heat, it becomes fully annealed again, and ductile enough to bend to final shape without breaking. Once it's formed to shape, I'll fill the joins with some of this soft solder. I should mention though, it's a one-shot bend. Brass work hardens very quickly. If it needs to be bent again, perhaps to correct the angle, it needs to be re-annealed to avoid cracking. And you can see I'm being fairly generous with the solder. I want to completely fill the gap with a nice rounded fillet of metal. A little bit of final surface finishing, and that's the stand complete. Brass does pick up fingerprints and tarnish quite quickly when it's handled, so the very last step of the project is to put on a thin coat of lacquer. And it's done. Now as a way to say thank you for your support of the channel, I'd like to make this project a giveaway. So be sure to check the description box below for the details on how to enter. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. And if this is your first ClickSpring video, thanks for taking the time to check it out. I post regular home machine shop project videos like this one, as well as videos on a longer term clock making project, so be sure to subscribe. If you're looking for some new projects for your lathe or mill, then take a moment to visit clickspringprojects.com, where you'll find the plans for this and several other projects available for download. And finally, if you'd like to help with the creation of these videos, then have a look at the ClickSpring Patreon page. Thanks again for watching, I'll catch you on the next video.